and the toy box was turning red. So let's get cracking! Hello all my explorers and welcome back to Lauren's Adventures Out There. And if you're new, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My name is Lauren and I'm with Castle Capes and Clones where we discuss everything in the Disney universe. We talk Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, The Muppets, 20th Century, National Geographic, Disney Plus, ABC, Hulu. If it's about Disney, we're talking about it. So if you like that kind of content, We'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out. Before we begin this video, we wanted again to say that without the labor of writers and actors, we wouldn't have the Disney content like the deep dive that we're going to be doing into Turning Red today. So we support the 2023 WGA and sag after it strikes so we are continuing our series inside the toy box which is our look at the films of pixar animation studios in chronological order and today we are going to be talking about 2022's turning red turning red follows may lee an average girl who is devoted to her family but as she reaches adolescence, she finds herself interested in boys, which puts herself at odds with her mother. The changes she feels manifest in her transforming into a giant red panda in moments of stress and embarrassment, which turns out is a family curse. Her mother tries to make May keep her panda stay within. But May feels free as a panda once she is accepted by her friends. When she and her friends plan to go see their favorite group, Four Town, a fight between mother and daughter ensues and threatens her relationship. After Domi Shi finished directing the short Bow, Pixar invited her to pitch three story ideas. All three were coming of age stories. But the one that everyone gravitated to was the one that eventually would become Turning Red. Based on her personal experiences, the story was about a girl going through a quote-unquote magical puberty. She said, quote, everyone has been there. Everyone has been 13 and feeling like they're turning into some th wild, hairy, hormonal beast. And I think that's why Pixar was drawn to it. Pixar producer Lindsay Collins said, quote, It was so clear that Domi had such a sense of who these two main characters were, that May and Ming were really clear and special and unique, more than any other ideas. And that she had this really personal experience with these two characters that were kind of versions of her own life. That's like the magic equation right there. Originally titled Red, the film would be both written and directed by she herself, making her the first woman to solely direct a film at Pixar. Actually, all the creative leads ended up being all women. Something Pixar CEO Jim Moore said, quote, happened very organically. Pixar hired Rosalie Chang, a local child actor, to do scratch vocals. When the filmmakers were ready to audition, they listened to a few, but realized that they had the right voice in Chang and offered her the job. It was just as they started to record that the world went into lockdown due to COVID. Pixar sent Chang recording equipment and they transformed a room for her to record. She knew she wanted Sandra Oh for the role of the mother Ming. 
not only was she a fellow Canadian, but she also admired the range of her acting abilities. While the film takes place in real-life Toronto, Ontario, in Canada, they needed to stylize the world as a 13-year-old would see it. Executive producer Dan Scanlon said, quote, It feels more like a very soft, colorful, magical, idyllic, almost youthful version of the city. She also considered how both popular games, such as Pokemon and The Legend of Zelda, as well as how boy band fandom would impact the world of a tween. She also was influenced by anime such as Sailor Moon and Ranma One Half, and to accomplish this look, they placed hand-drawn effects over computer effects. She described the film's overall look as an, quote, Asian tween fever dream. The film also talks about puberty without talking directly about biological changes. She and her fellow filmmakers were unapologetic about dealing with these issues, with Turning Red literally being an allegory for menstruation. They were afraid that Pixar would want to change these things, but everything remained intact. Production designer Rona Liu, who worked with Xi on Bao, oversaw the food scenes. They partnered with nonprofit organization Gold House, which promotes Asian and Pacific cultures to identify what foods to include. Ludwig Goranson was brought on to score the film, his first animated film project. He recorded everything within a two-week period after COVID relaxation. The film also featured three original songs written by Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas O'Connell. Nobody Like You, One True Love, and You Know What's Up. These songs were performed by the fictional boy band Fortown. Producer Lindsay Collins was inspired to approach Eilish and O'Connell after her daughter mentioned being a fan of Eilish. Collins used a scrapbook featuring scenes from the film as well as cutouts of Eilish and O'Connell to pitch them the idea. Turning Red has earned 20.1 million outside the U.S. and Canada. Like Soul and Luca before it, Turning Red was released as a Disney Plus original. According to Samba TV, Turning Red was streamed in 2.5 million U.S. households on its opening weekend, the most ever for a Disney Plus original. Turning Red received a score of 95% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes with critical consensus stating, heartwarming, humorous, beautifully animated, and culturally expansive. Turning Red extends Pixar's long list of family-friendly triumphs. So what did I think of Turning Red? I love it. I love Turning Red. I think that it's a great story and a story that needed to be told. I love the personal experiences that she brought in to the film. When the film came out, there were so many people, mostly men, who had said that they were very uncomfortable with the film. I mean, the film is an allegory, as, as I mentioned, to menstruation, um, but it does it in a way that, you know, doesn't talk about all of the, you know, symptoms or the um, things going on, like any of the biological changes. If you have a problem with even the slightest discussion about puberty happening amongst women, I, I don't think the problem is the film. I honestly don't. I think the problem is you have to recognize the fact that these things happen and the stigma needs to end. Women have periods. 
if you can't deal with the fact that women have periods, I just don't understand you. I really don't. So, anyway, I just think that it was a, just a great subject matter. Um, very entertaining. Loved Four Town. Loved the four best friends. Um, or the three best friends. All, four of them uh, in total. And I loved the relationship between Ming and her mother. Like, I know what it was like to be just kind of the good kid and not wanting to um, do anything against my mom. And, you know, when I got to a certain age and was experimenting more and things like that, um, you know, that it created a different relationship, but still a good relationship. And my mom and I are very close today, so... Anyway, that's it. Uh, did you see Turning Red? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love it to know if you loved it or hated it. And if you had a good time today, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out. Thank you so much, for everybody, and we will see you later. Bye!